Hello, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to another episode of the Philip DeFranco Show. Let's get started. Okay, so it's Friday. I really want to say I didn't have time to work on the game this week because I have a life, but that's a complete and total lie. Anyways, let's just ignore the fact that I have zero time management skills and just get started. I wanted to get started on a looping background, you know? I don't want the background to just slide off the frame and there just to be complete blackness. I honestly thought this would be pretty easy, but I kept having some weird issues where the background went through the loop-de-loops. Don't worry, eventually I figured it out. A background that loops. Please, hold in your excitement. After that, I started working on some juicy stuff, you know, some particle effects for when Jeff is shooting his gun. I know jack shit about the Unity particle system, so I just messed around, changed some values, did a little knickknacks, and eventually ended up with this effect, which I think is pretty decent, and I kinda like it. I think it adds some good JUICE! I felt like a few particles wasn't a lot of progress, so I wanted to get the local multiplayer working and add a second Jeff. Okay, copy prefab, change color, and done. <laughs> Just kidding, it wasn't that easy. I mean, technically it was that easy, but there's a small problem of one player controlling both Jeffs, and then the other player just sits in the background in a deep depression. Now maybe that type of game is fun for some people, but my family left me out of playing LEGO Star Wars way too much, so I have empathy for the players on the sidelines. It was time to get started and control the inputs. Unity has a really, 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 really terrible input system. That's a piece of garbage. It's really bad. It's especially terrible and messy if you wanted to do couch co-op, which is of course exactly what I wanted to do. After fucking around with it for ages, I finally managed to get both players moving on their own. The thing is, this isn't the worst part about the input. Let's say you have a PS4 controller and an Xbox controller. Here, let's put the budget, let's get the budget for the show up to build beer back. <laughs> Do some AS ASMR. You guys want some ASMR? Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Oh, yeah. P S four and X Xbox. P S four Xbox. MS Paint was much better than this. I'm going back to MS Paint. So let's say you have, for example, an Xbox controller and a PS four controller. Button one on Xbox, which would map to the A button, is button like seven on the PS four. So not only do you have to make a different input group for each player, but you also have to make a different input group for each controller for each player. Which is... <laughs> Fucking... Terrible. I had some inkling of an idea of how to make this easier using scriptable objects, but I didn't really explore it. There's an awesome asset out there called Rewired that I heard is just a joy to use and is great for couch co-op and input in general with Unity. Unfortunately, it's 40 bucks and I'm poor. So if like, if you want to sponsor me, Rewired, we, we, we <laughs> I'm, I'm listening, I'm here. If I added a face. I think it's pretty funny to have this dude with a face and then he like flips around so his face goes upside down. I have the sense of humor of a toddler. I put some effort into my scriptable object system for different gun types. I didn't do much with it, and by I didn't do much with it, I mean I literally just made a scriptable object, added some variables, and then left it because I'm lazy. I moved on to working on the ability system, and I also want to use scriptable objects for that. If you didn't catch my drift, I really like scriptable objects. So I got started setting up the basis for the abilities. A super basic but awesome ability would be to freeze time, except for the player that activated it so they can walk around, set up bullets that would fire when time went back to normal, you know, some cool ass matrix shit. So I started by just doing a simple time freeze, where I freeze time for everything, and I was just messing around with that, and that actually gave me a cool new idea. When I froze time, and shot bullets all around me in a circle, and then unfroze time, those bullets blast in every direction, and it looked really fucking cool. This gave me an idea for ability where a player gets a ring of bullets hovering around them for X amount of seconds, 
and then if another player tries to shoot at them and hits the ring, then the ring activates and it fires bolts off in every direction. I think that'd be really cool. So instead of getting started on it, I took my usual route and just went to bed. Relatives were coming over my house later, so I started work early today. And by early, I mean early on my schedule. I wanted to get the ring ability working, so I started on that, and then I lost all inspiration, drive, and want to make it, so I just gave up. I still wanted to add an ability to the game to show that I did something today, so I made this. Now that's epic. <laughs> All the ability does is it makes you fire a special teleport bullet, and then if you press the ability button again while the bullet's still not destroyed, then you teleport to that bullet. Also make the special bullet look different so you can actually tell what real bullet you fired and what the special bullet is, but for now it just looks the same. I'm also going to add some UI graphics in the corner so you see the cooldown on your ability. You know, you just don't want to be in the blind trying to fire your ability and it's not working. That'd just be obnoxious and not fun. But there is one very important thing I added this week. The most important thing. Brace yourself. If you're not seated already, I suggest you do, because this will knock your boots right off. That's right, baby. Triangles. I know, your mind is blown. Illuminati 69, baby. Anyhow, that should do it for now. I know I didn't do much this week. I also signed up for the next Ludum Dare, which is next week. Whoa, it's me, Kai from the future. Oh my god. Can you believe I'm actually the one who cracked time travel? That's insane. Anyways, I'm here visiting the past just to let you know what Ludum Dare is. It's a game jam, so that means you have 48 to 72 hours to make a game based on a theme that they released the day of the jam. It starts October 4th, so I suggest you enter it. It should be fun. Okay, the quantum energy is perfectly balanced now, so I gotta send you back to the past. So I might have a video on that instead of another devlog, because I'm gonna be busy on that. I think it'll also break up the monotony of just having a ton of devlogs, so I'm excited for Lumdari. Anyways, thanks for watching another video. Toodles! Okay, got my triangle working, this should look awesome. And nope, fucking Quaternions. <laughs>